Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now, are you looking for an absolutely bomb-proof and robust day sack for kind of bushcraft and general outdoor use? Well, if you are, stick around because today we're going to review the British Army issue 45 litre infantry Bergen from Pre. This thing is a beast. Now, I don't have the full specs of the material, but I think it's a 1000D Cordura nylon. Whatever it is, this stuff is really, really strong and thick. And it just inspires confidence because it's thick, but it's not overly heavy, uh, but it's just tough. And it's the sort of material where you don't mind just throwing this thing on the ground because you know it's not going to scuff. It's not going to get damaged by doing that. It's designed to withstand the rigors of war. It's really good. And that kind of robustness that extends to all areas of the bag. So every buckle, everything you have on there is kind of robust and chunky. And it just, it just oozes durability. And that's one of the things I really like about this bag. Now, you'd expect something so heavy duty to be also really heavy weight, but it isn't the case. The bag weighs in at a very surprising 2.1 kilos. Now, while that may sound heavy, when you compare that to something like the Osprey Atmos 50, 50 litre capacity bag, now that is a premium trekking bag, and that weighs in at two kilos, so it's only 100 grams heavier. So how do they do it? You know, bearing in mind we've got all these chunky components. And I think the, the answer is in the simplicity of it, because this is essentially just a great big bucket with shoulder straps. Um, so it's a really simple design. Now I actually like having just one sort of big central compartment because it means you can maximize the use of space. When you've got lots of different uh, compartments to kind of subdivide everything, quite often each little pocket has a little bit of space left over that you can't use. So this allows you to kind of maximize the space in a more efficient way. And it's just a simpler design with less things to go wrong. Now, I want to say it's just a big bucket with straps. I was being a little bit unkind. There is actually a really well-designed lid to this bag, and there's a really nice pocket here as well. And the zip is YKK, so it's a really robust zip, and it's very smooth. It tends not to snag. And there's pullers on here as well, so you can operate with gloves as I am. You just open the bag up, and you get this really, really big, nice pouch in here. Now, this is big enough to take something like, you know, lots of your, your sort of ration meals. Um, I think I've had a full, a full sort of 24-hour ration kit in here, you know, the bag type pretty sure I've had one of those in there uh, along with things like gloves and hats first aid kit things that you, you need to kind of have so really nice design um, on the inside you also have another um, pocket this one with a, with a mesh lining uh, and again like a K zipper plenty of space in there for your bits and bobs so really nice design now in terms of other pockets on here you do have um, pockets on the side here so these little kind of pockets to put like a water bottle in or something there's one on each side also on the side you have some uh, molly strapping so you can you know attach a molly compatible pouch in here if you wanted to uh, and you also have these straps now these can be used as compression straps when the bag isn't uh, completely full but also you can lash things to the bag as well this way so things like a roll mat for example you could put there quite easily and they clip in and again really nice strong buckles no concerns with that at all as an extra, one thing you can buy for this bag is something called rocket pouches. And these are designed to be zipped in, using these zips here. And you zip those onto the side of the bag. And I believe they're an extra 10 litres capacity each, which takes the overall bag up to uh, 65 litres, which is a lot to carry. So on the front of the bag, you also have lots of molly strapping. So you can apply lots of different kind of pouches here. A molly compatible first aid kit would be a good one to wear on the outside. Then you can always get to it quickly in an emergency. Um, and that's the kind of the front of the bag covered. You also have on the bottom these kind of extendable straps and these are designed for lashing things like a, a tent or a roll mat underneath. You, you could definitely get one of those under there. So again, just a lot of extra versatility for adding more capacity if you need to. So really good. Uh, again, with the army, they like to kind of build things to be uh, robust and reliable. So there's lots of different lashing points here. Now on the bottom of each bag, I'll just hold this up. You've got these really strong uh, D-rings here. Uh, and again, you could tie things to that. And they're on reinforced uh, webbing tabs, so they're not going to come loose. And they're also at the top as well. So there's one in each corner. So again, you can tie lots of things to that. And also, if that wasn't enough option, you also have four lashing points at the on the top of the lid as well. One, two, three, four. And again, you can fit all sorts and just lash that to the top. Now, if you look at the inside of the back of the bag, you can see that there is and articulated straps. Now, these aren't as articulated as some, but what that does is it means it conforms to the shape of your body a little bit better than a straight strap. So it's a bit more comfortable. 
It's also, you know, really padded. It's re it's really padded. It's quite wide. It's about six and a half centimeters wide. So it's there to support a lot of weight because obviously the guys have to carry a lot of kit. Uh, it has kind of this really tough mesh. And I don't think that is a weak point because I've had this bag about 10 years now and I've got no problems with it at all. Uh, there's mesh on the sides and mesh on the inside and that is there to encourage your ventilation. So that's a really good feature. And the back has the same material and the back is really well padded. Um, covered in this mesh so you don't sweat too much and there's a really good kind of internal frame inside here so it's stiff and that helps distribute the weight throughout the, throughout, throughout the pack. Um, you'll also notice how just how well reinforced it is because if you look at this it's all tied into this reinforced point here so there's no way that's going to break under normal use and again at the bottom it's got these kind of reinforced tabs here so the whole thing has just been built to be solid and rugged. Now there's a really good sternum strap on this bag which goes across the chest here and that obviously just stops the, the shoulder straps from slipping off so it makes it a lot more comfortable to wear. Now what I like about the sternum strap is it's much wider than you'll get in typical kind of commercial bags because it's been designed to be that sort of robust heavy duty bag. So it's wider, it's more comfortable, that spreads the weight a little bit and also again really heavy duty buckle. You don't feel this is going to kind of go anywhere and it certainly doesn't dig in at all so really well designed and I like that a lot. Now, if you've been paying close attention, you'll notice that there's one key feature missing from this bag, and that is it doesn't have a hip belt. It just doesn't exist at all on this bag, completely gone. But there's a reason for that, and that is this bag has been, de been designed to be worn as part of the personal load carrying equipment system. So it's been used with other components. Now, typically this would be worn over the top of a webbing set. So you'd have a, a hip belt on the webbing, you'd have your kind of ammunition pouches, your utility pouches, and a big yoke as well. And what happens then is this back is quite short uh, and then this will just kind of rest on top of your pouches there and take the weight off your shoulders that way. So that's why there's no hip belt on this. It's just too short to have one. So what are the implications of not having hip belt? Well, basically what I think it means is, you know, this bag isn't the best suited for carrying a heavy load a long distance because you can't transfer the weight to your hips and your legs and you know, off your shoulders and back. And that's really important when you're doing long distances with a heavy load. Now, there are lots of uses for this bag, and I think one of them is bushcraft. Now, typically in bushcraft, we don't travel more than a couple of miles to get into camp, uh, and then we just want to throw it down and get on with the camp chores and not worry about the bag and just, you know, make, you know, allow it to kind of do its thing and forget about it. So for that purpose, I think this bag is really good because it is so robust. It's not going to let you down, and you can carry really heavy loads in here without overstraining it. So that will be a definitely good use for it. I think also general kind of outdoor use as well, as long as you're not walking too many miles, then I think this could be a good option for you. Now, the only thing I don't like about this bag is it only comes in one color, which is MTP. And obviously that's the reason for that, it's because it's, a, it's an X issue bag. Now, for me, I prefer to have a solid color, like a brown or a green or a khaki, because I think as soon as you start putting things like camouflage on, especially if you've got a couple of items in military surplus, then you start to look a bit like a Walter Nitti or a wannabe commando. Uh, and that's something I try to avoid generally. So that's why I go for these kind of solid color khaki smocks. Uh, and generally I wouldn't wear this bag uh, with this smock because it's just a little bit too military, if you see what I mean. Where I tend to come, it is a train area. So there's a lot of soldiers around. Uh, and I don't want to get mistaken for one of them because uh, you know, obviously that would be embarrassing if they were to open up an ambush on me, that wouldn't be a good day out for me and the dogs. Uh, so for me, yeah, it, it just wish it wasn't an MTP. But if you want a really good bag that is solid, robust, not too expensive, and it's gonna last you a lifetime, go for the 45 litre infantry Bergen because this thing is built like a tank. Really good bit of kit. So once again, I hope you thought that was useful. If it was, think about subscribing so you don't miss any future reviews, and I'll see you next time.